Hey, this is Chad976, and today we're going to do a little tutorial on how to pour beer. Let me show you what not to do. This is how so many people out there pour a beer. Now, I'm using a typical American pint glass, and I'm pouring it the typical American way, tilted at 45 degree angle, with a bottleneck almost continually resting on the edge. Now, I mean, look at this. I'm almost completely done here and we got almost no head at all um, that's not a very good pour and as you can see it's you know highly carbonated one of the reasons you get a more aggressive pour is to get some of the carbonation out and up into the head so uh... that's uh... part one and that's how not to pour a beer and over the next few beers uh... i'll show you how to pour a beer now before we take a look at how michael jackson and randy Mosier, uh tell you how to pour a beer. I'm going to tell you how, to, how I pour a beer. Now personally I don't really like the tumbler. I'd much rather use a Nonic because it holds uh, 20 ounces because this one only holds 16 ounces. So to actually finesse a tumbler pour is, uh, is kind of an art form. So I would hold mine not quite 45 degrees, more like uh, 70 degrees maybe. Get start more aggressive. You hear like the you can see the thing gurgle. I'm starting to get now that's a that's a pretty good pour. Almost to the rim. I probably prefer it like a little bit over the rim. But uh, as you can see, the the line where the beer is is the same as the first pour. But look, I got two fingers of head here. It's kind of fizzling away. Um, but yeah, I, I'd call that probably not a perfect pour, but a pretty damn good pour. I just wanted to show you the differences between the two pours. This was the first pour, the classic, very conservative pour. Look, the glass is clean as a whistle, pretty much. Here's the second pour, more aggressive, got more head. And as you can see, actual lacing. So there you go. Now we'll move on to the Randy Mosier and Michael Jackson methods of pouring. For our third pour, I'm going to do what uh, Randy Mosier, the author of uh, Tasting Beer, an insider's guide to the world's greatest drink, uh, the way that he recommends uh, pouring a beer. He's written a lot of books about beer and home brewing. Now, he's got a whole chapter just on beer presentation, but uh, I just want to read a couple paragraphs from this part. As you can see, it says, With the right beer properly poured, you can create a rich, creamy head. To do so, pour the beer right down the middle of the straight-up glass. Trickling down the side is for sissies and re result in a too gassy beer with little aroma and a poor, quickly dissipating head. A vigorous pour will create a lot of foam, and this is good because when it settles down, the head will be dense and long-lived. We, we saw the results of that before when I gave it a vigorous pour. It's also important, especially with bottled beer, to release some of the carbonation. Too much fizz masks things like hop aroma and fills you up quickly. So pour and let the beer settle as many times as you need in order to fill the glass. Pour straight down and let it foam up. Let the foam settle. Pour, wait, and repeat until filled to the appropriate level and enjoyed. And, you know, he repeats what he says over here. Just basically, it's a, as, as a side benefit, you have knocked some of the excess gas out of the beer. And the result will be more like the smooth creaminess of draft beer. So let's give it a try. As you can see, I'm generating a lot of head, but I still have a lot of beer left in the bottle. So we'll just let that settle there for a minute. Well, it took over two minutes from the time I started the pour, and uh, as you can see, I have a nice, generous, what, three-finger head here. It's a, uh, you know, it looks like kind of soapy foam, but it does look kind of creamy, and it's still not finished settling. And the line, once again, the line is right at the same spot as the first two pours. And I have even more head. It's doing like this kind of volcano effect. All right, I'm back. I'm only halfway through this. But I definitely notice if you take a look here, look, the beer is totally flat. You don't see a lot of the carbonation like you saw with the first beer. Um, and the head's holding, around, holding up, getting some pretty good lacing so far. And I would agree with Randy that uh, it does have a creamier body. It, uh, the, at least the head gives it a creamier texture. 
it's not quite as bitter as my pour, though. That's, that's something I'm I'm noticing. It's definitely not quite as bitter. Um, but it, it's a smoother beer, though. So uh, I'm going to finish this up, and we'll go to the Michael Jackson drink. Okay, for the fourth and final pour, we're going to use the Michael Jackson method from his book, uh, Great Beer Guide. If you're watching this, you probably know who Michael Jackson is, but just in case you don't, he was one of the world's foremost beer critics. I mean, look at these quotes in the back of the book. He died a couple years ago. Um, but anyways, in, in the back here, he's got a few methods on how to pour beer, specifically wheat beer, pilsner, stout, and uh, ale. Now, you know, there's only, only two types of beer, ale and lager, but when he says ale, I, I think he means uh, it's any kind of British-style beer. And an IPA is technically a British-style beer. Um, a gentle, steady pour down the side of the tilted glass will stop the beer from foaming excessively. He's holding it about a 45 degree angle there, classic American style. And it's funny because that's in direct contradiction of what, you know, Randy Mosher said. He said, you know, pouring down the side is for sissies. And he said lots of foam is great. <laughs> so that's very interesting. Uh, you know, part two, steepen the angle and pour more directly to avoid the beer being too flat. Aim for one finger of foam. Um, which is interesting because if you look in this third picture here, that's clearly more than one finger of head. That's more about like two and a half to three fingers. Um, but he says, you know, too much creaminess will rob the beer of its appetizingly bitter character. The hop oils will migrate from the beer itself and hide in the head. Now that's true because uh, I noticed when I drank it through the Randy Mosher pour method, it was less bitter, more creamy, and kind of, you know, it definitely kind of flatter in the mouthfeel. So I'm interested to see how the Michael Jackson pour method uh, will affect the taste of this beer. Now notice in his picture he held it rather high, right about here. He didn't say how vigorous of a pour to get though. So and I'm going to tilt it straight up here and get a little more vigorous. Now that's ooh, almost a perfect pour, similar to my method. Uh, my method would be a little more vigorous from start to finish, but that's a nice uh, conservative pour. There's definitely some carbonation bubbles in there, more than uh, more than the Randy Mosier method, um, but uh, far less than the super conservative uh, noob method that I started this uh, this video out with. All right, I definitely noticed a little bit more bitterness in the Michael Jackson method than the Randy Mosier method. Body's not quite as creamy. Um, it is definitely noticeably bitter. I would I would agree with that. Um, getting some nice lacing here. It's not uh, highly carbonated like the too conservative method. I'm not burping after every swig. Um, so yeah, this is a good method. I like it. My method is kind of a hybrid between the Michael Jackson and the Randy Mosher method. You know, it's it plays it fairly safe like Michael Jackson but gets a little more vigorous to get a lot more head. Um, but I actually, I don't really like the straight down the center method unless I'm pouring a stout or a porter because that's the kind of beer I would want a creamier texture to. Um, especially in kind of imperial beer where you're not going to generate a lot of head. That's a, that's a good method to pour. So what do you guys think? Do you like Michael Jackson? Do you like Randy Mosier? Do you like mine? Do you like to play it safe and just pour right down the side? Or do you have your own method? Let me know. Don't just leave a comment. Make a video response. I'd love to see everybody make their own video on how they pour beer. And if you can actually taste the difference in the different pour methods. Because, you know, I never thought I really could until I made this video. And sure enough, um, I did. So, that does it for this special episode of how to pour a beer for, you know, in-depth discussion for all you beer geeks out there like me. Um, and if you're not into beer, well, hopefully this taught you something too. And, uh... Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in another beer video real soon. Bye.